Alright guys, welcome back to my Rookie to Diamond Sakura tutorial. Uh, for this video, uh, for going from going from silver to gold, uh, when I did this back in November, I didn't really add too many things uh, upon our basic game plan that we use in bronze to silver. Uh, so the way I usually do this, as you guys have seen in the previous videos, is the beginning of the video is our basic game plan. I show some matches that I find that where I feel I use the game plan to the best of my ability. And then I usually record the final thoughts of the video after I look through the clips and the matches. And if I see something that I feel like I did not mention in the beginning, I go ahead and mention that in the end. Uh, but for this video, it's gonna be about three or four things that we're gonna change in this game plan. Not so much change, but just add upon what we did in bronze. So if anyone is coming to this video right now and did not watch the previous video, Bronze to Silver, um, you don't have to watch the whole video. So what I'm saying is, if you're already in Silver, and you wanna, you wanna, you wanna see where I'm coming from in terms of approaching this rank from my perspective, I would say go to the previous video. The first 20 minutes or so, I talk about the game plan that I use from Bronze to Silver, and then once you have a good idea of that game plan, you can come back to this video and see what I added from bronze to silver or rather from silver to gold sorry uh so the first thing that i'm going to talk about is engaging in risk i think silver from silver to gold is where you want to start thinking about the risks that you can take and one of those risks is jumping so for the previous videos i rarely jumped because i didn't really feel a need to but when i ran through this a few months ago uh through these ranks i noticed that players in silver started to get the hang of the fireball game and sometimes you're gonna have to make hard reads and get a feel for when your opponent is gonna throw a fireball and then go ahead and jump uh and the reason i'm going to implement that in silver is for two things one like i just said uh if our opponent is getting too comfortable throwing fireballs at us uh we get a feel for the patterns they throw fireballs and then we go ahead and jump uh, i think the first match after this game plan that i'm going to show is a match versus sagat so you guys will get a good feel of how to approach uh players in silver using the fireball game now the other one the other reason that we're gonna start using jumps in this rank is for players who don't anti-air properly a lot of people that i played against in silver and even in gold all the way up to plat had very poor uh anti-airs and i think it's good to take advantage of that and the reason why i say this is because i want you guys to get in the habit of taking advantage of when your opponent um is not responding to something you're doing that's a that's working so, everything I'm, I've taught you guys in neutral, like the fireball game, like hard, like hard kick spacing, stuff like that. Um, we, I, 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 I mention this because I want you guys to not jump, right? I want you guys to get a good footing of how to play the neutral game, right? But sometimes uh, our matches are a lot easier if your opponent, if, if you can jump in on your opponent and they don't anti air. So what, what, the, to, to sum it up why play neutral if i can just jump all day on my opponent right so i'm gonna implement jumps in this game plan but only under a certain circumstance and that circumstance is if our opponent has poor anti-airs if every time we jump let's say we're playing against a ryu uh they do a dp to anti-air that's your key to stop jumping that's your key to say okay our opponent has pretty good anti-airs if i keep doing this i'm gonna die right but I do want to implement this early on, uh, this this idea that if we find a, a, a weak point in our opponent's game plan, and how we're exposing that weak point is con is continuously working, why not just keep doing it, right? Uh, but again, only if our opponent has poor anti-airs. Uh, the reason I have Geef here is because there is a match I'm going to show you guys where I play against a Geef who doesn't have good anti-airs, and it works for a few times, and then he starts to anti-air, he starts to adapt. That is when I stop jumping, right? So even though he's looking for jumps, I'm no longer doing them. Now I can play the footsie game, the neutral game, right? Uh, the next thing is spacing. Uh, somebody mentioned this, I think, on my previous video or my previous stream. I'm not sure who exactly mentioned it, but they made a good point. Uh, in the previous video and Rookie, when I use my pokes, like medium kick, mainly hard kick, definitely this button. I use this button a lot in, uh, in the entire tutorial series. This is a big button I use. I don't really talk about spacing. So what I mean by spacing is um, you want to have a good idea of 
Because this button is actually going to save. If I hit it, Zangief, or if I hit an opponent really close, like let's say I, I set uh, Zangief to low jab, right? Uh, let me record this really quickly. So if I if I record him to low jab after he blocks, he's actually going to punish my hard kick. My my hard kick is actually uh, slightly unsafe. So if I go ahead and turn that on and make sure he's on or all guard, this happens. See, I'm blocking right now. And I'm getting hit. So you want to use this button from far. You know, if I use this from far, he can't reach me, right? So this is really important. Even though things, uh, certain moves in this game are unsafe, if you space them correctly, they become safe. So hard kick is one button like that. Uh, this takes time. Spacing, I mean, I, I'm still learning this stuff. Even, even after 1,700 hours I played this game, I'm still learning correct spacing with moves. I still get it wrong. I still don't space things properly, get with punish, and, and die because of it. Uh, but I want you guys to start learning this early on. And you can start learning this with spacing hard kick. Hard kick is very, very strong in the early ranks because people, or, mind you, not a lot of players are thinking this way. The game plan that I'm introducing, not a lot of players are taking this to heart and really applying it to their game plan. So I want you guys to have the advantage and apply it to your game plan. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, obviously I've talked about this combo, right? Now this combo won't always work at every range. There's gonna be some times, some ranges where you hit right here, or really close, and either, and if you don't time your back hard punch frame perfect, uh, this button actually whiffs as so. So what do you do in that case? Well. If any time you press stand medium punch to punish your opponent and you feel like you're not in range to do a back hard punch, you want to switch to light kick medium DP. That will replace... Now, mind you, it's not as good. It doesn't give you the same kind of uh, pressure scenario after a knockdown. It doesn't do as much damage. But it's better than committing to a combo that doesn't work. Right? As so. So if I don't time this properly... Now I'm super unsafe. Zangief gets a punish, and now I have to guess. You want to avoid that. So this is how you avoid that. So we're definitely going to implement that. Um, and the last thing, again, like I said, I'm really ex just mainly expanding upon the same game plan we use from bronze to silver into silver to gold, right? So the last thing I'm going to talk about here before I show you guys the matches um, is the throw game. I haven't really talked about the throw game at all in this entire series yet. So I'm going to start implementing them for you guys here. Uh, so two basic scenarios, right? Sometimes your opponent is simply going to uh, sit there. Just going to... Oh, sorry. That's the wrong one. They're just going to sit there. And if as much as you press, right? As much as you poke, as many fireballs as you throw, they're just not going to press anything. Let me turn this off just so it looks better. Uh, they're just going to sit there, right? So what do you do in this instance? If you feel like your opponent is getting too passive... There's two things you can do. Walk up throw and see how they react. If they, if as you walk, they start jabbing, right? Uh, I'll give two examples. So let's say I start walking forward and I want to grab Zangief. Now, as soon as I get in range, he starts um, jabbing, right? So I'm actually going to record him. Let's see if I can replicate this somehow. So I'm going to have him just sit there and mash jab a few times, right? So I'm going to have him do that. So let's say I try to walk up grab and that happens. So what do you do in this scenario? What do you do when, when you try to poke, Zangief doesn't press anything. But when you get close to try to grab him, he jabs you. What do you do? So the same uh, the same button we've been using, hard kick, if you get it at max range, this, this is something called a whiff punishing. I'll explain this as we get into later ranks. But here is one instance, it's actually two instances we can talk about, where you can use something called a whiff punish. A whiff punish is basically using your own button to punish your opponent's button. So what I'm going to use is standing hard kick to punish his jab, right? So let's say I want to walk up throw, and every time I try to do it, he jabs. So what I do is I get in range, and then I press this to get a crush counter. Now it's kind of hard to do on this button, because this button is really fast. Like that. Now, it won't work every time, right? Uh, you probably, and at, at this range, you probably won't get a full punish. Like, if I try to get this... Well, there I did get it, right? But sometimes you won't be able to get it because you're so far. And it's pretty hard to do. It's pretty hard to do consistently. But this is the basic. This, th these are the basics of whiff punishing. So if you try to walk up throw and they start jabbing, you can use standing hard kick to make them scared to press that button. Then when they're scared to press uh, low jab as you walk forward, now you have your walk up throw game again. And you can start doing it again. Well, that's one instance where we can use throws. The other instance is if it's the same scenario. If they sit there... 
and they're getting really cocky and they they're playing really passive you can do dash up throw now i really want to avoid dashing in the early ranks because i think it's, it's something that's really unsafe and can be punished if your opponent happens to be pressing something like i've noticed in silver and gold a lot of people just press buttons in neutral they just press things so if you dash you'll run into something you don't want to run in you know you don't want to run straight into damage but if your opponent is playing really passive we can use dash up throw in that instance now the other instance where i talked about where you can with punish like i said in the probably in the next video i would say gold uh gold supply i would definitely mention uh very small instances of whip punishing but at one instance that you can also do this is i'm actually going to show this in a match with zangief later on in the video so sometimes zangief do this this is a really really slow move right now i don't want to get too complicated with the whiff punish let's say zangief is doing this and it whiffs right in your face you if if they're constantly charging it in your face you can use hard kick to hit it like that now if you hit it during he absorbs it so you don't want to do that you want to wait till the move is over and then press hard kick that is one scenario we'll implement with punishing that's it now you can do a lot of other things like this uh but again that stuff will come later just, 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 just to tease you guys for what's coming into gold to plat and uh, plat to diamond uh but for now use hard kick hard kick is what you want to use and only really for this scenario for zangief using uh charging hard punch because i this button covers a lot of ground and you don't want to let Zangief get away with this. Uh, so definitely use stand hard kick uh, in that scenario. Again, I will show this in a in a in a, in a match uh, later on in the video. But this is pretty much it, guys. Again, if you want to get the full game plan, uh, where where I really talk about the, the core fundamentals going into bronze to silver and silver to gold, uh, go to the previous video and the first 24 minutes. I have I have a timestamp in those timestamps in those videos too. Uh, I talk in uh, in detail about what specifically I want to add, starting from bronze, and finishing up to gold. When we hit gold, a lot of new stuff is coming. We're going to talk about the late teching. We're going to talk about frame traps, frame data, uh, a, a lot of a lot of good stuff. The throw, the throw, and uh, and meaty game. We're going we're to implement really basic forms of meaties, really basic forms of pressure. A lot of really good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and show the matches now, and I hope you guys enjoy. And I come back in like a week. All right, I'm gonna do more medium kick to uh, fireballs. All right, he's doing a lot of this. We're gonna jump on this guy. Okay, he's got antares. This guy's not bad. Nice. Messed up my combo. Our basic combo, we got it. Yo, do you block that low? Do you guys know? I really don't know what you got. Do you block do you guys block that low? Yeah, I don't really. I, I feel like I feel like they should change that. It's a lower. Okay, all right. Now I know. Wow, my answer didn't work. That kind of sucks. I don't know. Okay. That's not safe. I thought there was a sweep. Oh. 
So I did a dash forward throw to kind of throw him off. Let's add that. Let's add that a little bit. Dash forward throws. Let's add that in our in silver game plan. Only do it sometimes. If, if we feel like like we're playing against a Sagat, that's playing really patient. I think we'll do that. Baited it again. Don't that shit. Out of that air. That's fine. Got caught by that bullshit. for a jump. That's not safe. I wasn't really confident in my punish there. Um, with the, uh, what you call it, with light you kick. Win. That's why I didn't do it there. Um, so basically what I added there was every time I got an anti-air, or threw fireballs at him and got cl I would walk forward try to bait a DP and he did DP so that's exactly what I'm doing Mattis I'm trying to do this like as my personal way to teach Sakura how to play in each in each rank I'm kind of learning as I go because I really don't know how to do this shit I'm kind of like learning as I go there's probably a few more things I could add for silvers but I don't really know yet that's unsafe that 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 uh that um a tiger knee was unsafe Getting too comfortable walking back. It's okay, he can keep doing that. I know what to do after that. That's unsafe. Tiger knee too close. Oh, nice grab. Okay. Mm, good stuff. And there. I woke up jab because I felt like he was gonna grab. If you guys think a grab is coming, uh, you can you can wake up jab. That's the one scenario where I will allow um, countering jab at a low level. A counter, uh, countering a grab. Sorry. Oh, good jump. I keep... I keep reading that slow. Okay, we, 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 we uh, went over that punish earlier. We got an opportunity to do it. Got a punish. Okay. Baited another DP. Nice grab. I thought a grab was coming and he said he pressed the button. So I simply just guessed wrong. Final round. Fight. Oh, that was good. There's a jump. Another jump. That 
That's a punish. Another punish. That's fine. I can't see the dash. It's okay. Universe of that. Good games. So, one thing I incorporated that I probably should have incorporated earlier was I. There was one instance where I took advantage of a habit. Every time he did that low kick that I asked you guys about, I would check it with a light kick after. I noticed every time he blocked that light kick, he would press a button right after. So what I did was, after I blocked that low medium kick, that forward medium kick, whatever it was, I did a, a low forward into a, a light Tatsu buffer. And the Tatsu caught him pressing something. Then I simply uh, did a jab check and I blocked. Because I felt the DP and he DP'd and then I punished him. So it's kind of what goes back to what I said earlier where... It's good to take advantage of when an opponent is doing a consistent habit. Every time I uh, every time I block that low forward medium kick and I press light kick after, he'd press something. So I did a, a crouch medium kick light Tatsu. That way the Tatsu would catch the button he's pressing. It's a bit deep, but um, it's good to catch it like that. I would say I'm gonna just, I'm just going to play keep away. I'm going to play keep away. That scar more important than a Hado. Where? How do you deal with random rushy, random eagle spikes? A lot of those things are unsafe, Dark Owl. A lot of those things are unsafe. What does a silver, silver... I actually don't know. We're going to find out. What we're going to do is if we see with command grabs, guys. With command grabs have a lot of recovery. If we see that, we dash in and do our bread and butter. Round one. Fight. So he's jumping a lot. He's jumping a lot. He's jumping a lot. I messed it up, I messed it up, I messed it up. I was too far, I was too far. We're gonna jump out of here soon. I don't have feet, okay. There we go. We did a jumping combo, we saw that coming. We jumped out. This guy's jumping a lot. He is terrifying for all the wrong reasons. This guy's jumping a lot. That was good. I, I, I meant to get up quicker. I want to bait that Lariat again. It's unsafe. Like that. Like that. Jump out. Oh, you threw me, okay, you threw me back. Reversal that. Good. Up out. Punish. Back dash. Just wait. Just poke him a little bit. Poke him a little bit. Let's be reversal in this. No, I won't hit from there. We went over that combo earlier. If we have him in the corner and see an opportunity for that. We're going to do that combo. So this guy took a lot of risks. All we did was use normals to keep him out. We waited for jumps. When we were in the corner, we still jumped out. Right? And we uh, and we, we just punished on opportunities where he whiffed command grabs. That's all we did. Also, if you guys get pulled in by Geef's V-Trigger 1, it's unsafe. So I'm kind of hoping he does this so I can show you how to punish it. Fight. That's unsafe. Okay, he still got caught by it. Okay, he got caught by it. Okay, he caught me with that. 
If you want to deal with this, get up and backdash. That's how you deal with that. Jump out. Do a max damage combo. Back up. Poke him. Right there is unsafe, but I didn't react to it. That's unsafe right there. Can you reverse that? Oh, I almost missed my jumping. My anti-air. I'll go over what I just did there. If you guys block a jump in from Geek and Silver, I suggest holding up. They're probably going to command grab at some point. That was the wrong anti air. Don't do that, guys. You have to do crouch on a punch. Uh, no, if he pulls you in raw with the tornado with V Trigger 1. It's it's unsafe. You can mash jab. Let's see how he handles jumps. Ooh, he's not jumping. Hold on. Okay, now we dance here. Oops. Nope. I almost got caught by that. I, I am gonna lie. I almost got caught by that. Anti air. Anti air. No. Oh, I should have. I should have waited for that. That's unsafe. Okay. I got lucky a few times. I'm not gonna lie. But we played big time keep away. Yeah. So I did do one with punish. If you guys don't know what that is. It's basically, you use a button to punish their button. So he did a charge heart punch, and he threw it at me, and it, and it missed. But his arm stuck out. So I knew he was going to miss. So right right as it missed, I pressed hard kick. That may be one instance where you can use whiff punishing in silver against Zangief. Uh, what do you do about throws? Try to take, try to take it, half, but half the time, it won't take at all, or I try to do the throw buttons and still get a hit from that. I personally don't like teching. We, maybe we'll do delay tech or late teching later on. But if you think a throw was coming, you can just jab. You can just jab. I just, I just, I just mash jab. That's Round all I do. One. All right. Fight. So this guy likes to throw out random shit. We can see that already. That's not safe. We punched that. Not safe again. I'm gonna explain what I did there. Sometimes if you think they're gonna they're gonna react to your fireball with a jump, you can charge an air fireball. If you see that it hits, heavy DP. I'll explain that after. This guy keeps doing unsafe shit, so we're gonna punish every time. I missed up my punish because of the lag, but that's okay. Can you reverse of that? Anti-air. Let's jump out. Jump out, jump out. We and we punish that. Anti-air that. Anti-air again. There we go. Uh, yes, there is. There is. There is a better punish. We're going to apply that in gold. We're going to do that in gold. Don't worry. It's a bit tricky, but we can do it. The expired will keep him out. Jump. Yep. I didn't believe in the punish there. That's a punish. Anti air. All right, if we have to stop dashes with with jabs. The expired ball. Okay. He mixed me up there. That was good. I thought he was gonna walk forward and uh, man grab again. I'm also not trying to EXTP at all, if you guys notice. I wake up, I'm trying to never do it. I think 
that's I think that one's unsafe. I can't remember. I'm trying to do low forward, low, cross medium kick to EX Fireball. I'm gonna jump out of the corner soon. There it is. We're just mashing to get out. Stop him from moving forward. Reversal. DX Fireball. Jump out. Try to wait for a better jump. We're waiting for something really dumb. Oh, I think I, I might. Shit, I might have fucked up. Thought that one was unsafe. Well, he fucked up too. Poked him out with light kick. Close it out. That was really sloppy on my part. You win. It's because I knew he was gonna dash, but I was trying to not punish dash on reaction because I know a lot of you guys have trouble with that. So I was trying to find a better way to deal with dashes. So what I did was I was throwing out. Crouch medium kicks to EX Fireball. I was just doing it. I was buffering it. That way, if he keeps dashing, he runs into the crouch medium kick EX Fireball if he keeps dashing. I just kept doing it until he ran into it. That might be a way to deal with it So, yeah, That one's unsafe. That's a punish? Full punish. Oh, I don't know why I didn't react to that. I'm sorry. Oh, that's a full punish. If you feel like Alex's are going to keep dashing in and doing stuff, you could neutral jump. Like that. They just run into it. See that? They just run into it. Neutral jump is really good against Alex's who do full screen stuff. Waiting for a jump. There's a jump. See, I'm just doing it over and over until he runs into it. Let's do it again. Okay, I tried to be reversal, but he command grab instead. All right, we have to jump out. He might do the kick. There it is, be reversal. Jump out. That's okay. Oh, my anti-air missed. That's unfortunate. Oh, we got a full jumping combo. He didn't anti-air. He has fireball? Yes. That's not safe. That jump is not safe. If he whiffs it, if he misses it, or if you block it, it's unsafe both times. Speaking of Akuma. Ask her Mike! What up, baby? Yo, bad man. I'm a bad man. Alright, let's beat this guy to get gold, huh? This is oh, I played this guy before. Uh, what buffs does Sakura need? She needs a better costume. <laughs> she needs better costumes, bro. No, I don't, Miku. This is my own show. This is this is the Sakura show, bro. Come on. Alright, we're only gonna... Alright, with Akumas, I, I think I might have found an answer to Silver Akumas, guys. I mentioned this earlier. If they do a lot of jump air fireballs from far range, when you see a jump, neutral jump. Fight. And then punish on the way down. It actually worked last time. You didn't do it. Let's see if he answers. <laughs> I don't think so. That's unsafe, but I fucked it up. Oh yeah, random wake up DP! You know how to punish that. Yeah! Random wake up DP! DP again? No? Oh. That was good. That's okay. We're just gonna block it all day. That's so laggy. Oh, I almost, I almost had the punish. Yo, Deeble, this is that walking back and forth bullshit I mentioned, that clip that you made of me. That's okay. Yeah. 
random jump. He has an anti-air, so I, I'm free to jump on this guy. Round two. Fight. Shit. Hey, relax. Relax. Oh. Oh. I got a joke. He kept doing fireballs, so we're jumping on this guy. And he's not an anti at all. He just did it, huh? Universal. That's unsafe. Come on. I'm too far to do a full punish, but we can get that punish. Yeah, random DP. All we did was bait DPs. We jumped a bit because he's not anti airing. Um, and we punished DPs. That's, did I just say that? I think that's all. <laughs> that's all I did. All right, let's do. Uh, should I play this guy one more time? Why not? Let's do it one more time. We hit gold, but let's do, let's play one more time. Let's do it one more time. Going for that one meaty setup. Yeah, right. Does he want to play again? Okay. Round one. Fight. Oh boy. I messed up my punish. He's not answering at all, guys. Yeah! I know a DP's coming. Fireball jump. Oh, what the hell? Okay, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. When he gets jumping on, he matches the XTP. Oh, I messed up. I'm gonna die here. I messed up, I messed up. That was my bad. So we're just gonna jump on this guy and try to bait DPs. Because that seems to be like the... Uh, yeah. What the hell was that? Let's see. Let's see if he learns. See if he picks it up. Yeah. Mashing DB. What? I oh, I missed that. I'm just gonna. Uh, my offense is going to be jumping and blocking because this guy, he's mashing DP and he blocked the jump. What's up? Oh, now he's answering. Look, here we go. Why? Why would you do that? That's punishable. He's gonna get beat trigger now. Yep. Oh. You try to wake up DP, fucked it up. That's a random super. B trigger is gone. I must have my punish, that was my bad. Right, let's not die. Let's not die. Yeah, random mash DP. Let's go. So this guy never answered. So all we did was jump, bait DPs. We punished some sweeps. And we punished Tatsu. He kept doing crouching medium kick to Tatsu. I don't know why he kept doing that. And that, my friends how you get to go even though we screwed up a few times against the bison and the kareem player um the vast majority of the time we were able to win with just basic fundamental shit 
We haven't even implied full punishes yet. But we're going to get to that in just a second. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the matches. I hope it gave you a clear understanding of our our game, my game plan that I've talked about so far and how to apply it in each match. Um, so after looking through the matches um, individually, I did miss a couple of things. So I wanted to mention that in this part of the video. Uh, so the first thing is looking out for player habits and finding a way to expose their habits. So I actually did mention that when I fought that Sagat player in one of the match, and I think the first match of this video, right? So uh, every time he did that forward medium kick, and I blocked it, and then responded with light kick. After he blocked the light kick, he's always mashing buttons, which is fine, right? Standing light kick is actually uh, I I'm at a frame disadvantage, right? So if if Sagat, um, if I were if Sagat were to block my standing light kick, and after he blocks it, he presses a button, and I press a button, he's going to win, right? So it makes sense why he pressed there. But that doesn't mean that we don't have an answer to that. You can, there's always an answer to something in this game, in pretty much any fighting game. So I'm going to have Sagat replicate the same scenario that uh, that Sagat player was doing in that match. So here's an example. He would do this, light kick, and he would start pressing right there, right? So one way I exposed that was cancel into light Tatsu, and I caught him pressing a medium punch. Now... This, this 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 specific answer doesn't beat everything. If the Sagat player actually does, I believe, a, a light kick, um, it does change things quite a bit. So I'm going to record him doing the same thing. Blocking for a second and then doing a light kick. Uh, and if I go over that option instead, uh, it's quite a different scenario. Mm, maybe I mistimed it. Uh, let's try it again. So I'll go ahead and put that on. Hmm, maybe, maybe not like it. Maybe it's stand jab. Well, I, I can't really replicate it too well, honestly, because I'm kind of bad at this, but uh, at this specific scenario. But um, that's this setup doesn't always work, or this answer doesn't always work. If your opponent... Um, or actually, you know what? There's actually a, there's a way to show this. Here, I'll do this right now. So if I record him uh, responding after blocking with a light kick... Oh, whoops. Guys, also, when you guys record things, whenever you want to record, let's say you want to record uh, your uh, your opponent responding right after they block an attack, you have to make sure reversal pops up on the screen, as so. Right there, reversal popped up on the right side. When you th That means you timed it exactly as the block stun was finished. So make sure reversal always pops up uh, on the side of the screen. Uh, so if I go ahead and do this... He can actually interrupt that as so, if he times it correctly. So this isn't exactly a real answer, right? It's just he was pressing crouching medium punch. Now, crouching medium punch is a much slower move than standing light kick. So standing light kick will work there. Sometimes it'll trade, but sometimes it, but either, it'll either trade or it's going to hit me uh, entirely and knock me out, right? But I noticed that he was pressing, I believe it was crouching medium punch. It might have been a different button, but he wasn't pressing a button fast enough, is my point. So I took notice of that, and I responded uh, with a light kick canceled into light tatsu, as so. As so. And then I would jab it and back up. Now another thing is, um, a good something something that's good to have in, to keep in your in your head when you guys are playing your matches, is whenever you're in a, stage, in a situation where you're not sure what to do next, right? So let's say for this example, uh, this scenario where I block, the medium kick, light kick Tatsu, right? Here, let me do it again. Messed up. Right here, you're not sure what to do here. You simply block. The reason I suggest you block is because what a lot of players do in these ranks, they mash when they're on pressure, right? A DP might actually come out there. Like right here, he might mash DP right there. Um, so what you want to do is anytime you feel like you're not sure what to do, just simply crouch block or back dash. Preferably crouch block. Because sometimes, very often, your opponent will just mash a DP and a DP will come out and you'll punish it. Um, that's actually what you'll see, what you guys saw in the in the match pr right before uh, this, this final thought section started when I played that Akuma player. There were times where I jumped in on him and he would mash DP because he's, he's under pressure and he's not sure what to do. That actually brings me up to my next point. 
getting a feel for DPs in between block strings, as I think I, I think it's really important for especially for early ranks. So let's say you go for a jump and your opponent doesn't anti-air it, but they do block it, right? Now the Akuma player that we played earlier, uh, he was mixing up between here. I actually have uh, our opponent responding with DP and our opponent responding with block. So I'm going to turn both those options on, and they will, and the game will decide what the opponent will do. So if I do this, see he blocked there. But right here he DP'd, and you're not sure what he's going to do. If you're ever, if you ever feel like your your opponent is going to DP next time they're under pressure, uh, so I guess on a Kuma player I would jump and get a, and I would jump hard kick, and usually I would do jump hard kick into medium punch. Um, which also, by the way, guys, I didn't mention this in the beginning. If you do go for a jump in, your default, uh, your default string should be jump hard kick into stand medium punch. Now, this is a very early way of something called hit confirming, which I will cover much later in our tutorial. But hit confirming, uh, if I just to keep it brief, it's basically you you press a button and you react to your opponent getting hit, and because you you react to your opponent getting hit, you finish off your combo. So you can actually do this with a jump in. So every time you guys jump in with, with jump hard kick, I want you guys, so every time you decide to jump, you have to think of what you're going to jump in with and what you're going to do when you hit the ground. Those are two things you have to think about. So the first thing is jump hard kick. Now what do you do when you hit the ground? Standing medium punch because they combo. And if you see that the jump in worked and your opponent got hit, you finish off with back hard punch into hard DP. Every time you guys jump in, I want you guys to commit to that. Because when you jump, you're already committing to a risk. So what you have to do is you want to maximize your potential for the risk. So you want to have a plan when you jump. And so the plan is jump, hard kick, stand, medium punch. It hit, back, hard punch into hard DP. Now even if I set... Well, if you want to practice this, you can set your opponent to random guard. Here, I'm going to take the, rec the recovery options off re really quickly. Just have it random. Okay, it didn't, it didn't, I didn't get it there. I didn't get it there, right? You keep doing it. I didn't get it there. Actually, that's that's a random. I did not. I'm stupid. I got it there. Bam, and we just finish off. Uh, this is really good to practice early on. Hit there, you finish it off. But there will be a scenario where it doesn't work. See, right there, it didn't work. So you stop. You stop after medium punch. Your one, two, it hit. Boom. You see, if it didn't hit, no, it didn't hit there. You stop. So when you guys jump in. But uh, for Sakura specifically, it will depend on the character you play, but for Sakura specifically, those two buttons, I want you guys to commit to every single time you decide to take a risk and commit to a jump. You could do jumping hard punch instead if, you, if that makes you feel more comfortable, but it's good to also do jump hard kick because you can do it really early, and sometimes your opponent won't anti-air uh, early enough, so this catches uh, early anti-airs, and then you can come all the way down. So if you're going to commit to a jump, that's what I want you soccer players to commit to. Um, so again, so going back to what I said before about getting a feel for when, getting a feel for when your opponent wants to DP, right? So I'm going to set both these options on. Sometimes he'll block after a guard, after three blocks. Or sorry, yeah, sometimes he'll block, sometimes he'll DP. It'll be random. But if I feel it coming, I'll do this. Oh, sorry. I'll do this and block. Okay, there he blocked. And the reason I do this is because, let's say if I commit to jump hard kick into medium punch, the DP will actually beat the medium punch. Oh, sorry. Maybe not so... I, actually, I don't think... Um, see, that, that, will, that will come out sometimes. Um, you know what? Let me switch it to EXDP. EXDP is probably better. So, uh, I, think, I think this is DP. Right. So, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to EXDP. The Akuma player did hard, I think hard DP most of the time, but a lot of players would do EX instead. So if I do this, and he does it, he happens to do a, a EX DP, hopefully he does it. Right there. I try to commit to his medium punch, but he masked EX DP there. Actually, if I just set this by itself, right there it gets beat. So let's say... Let's say you get, you, let's say it's, it's round one of the match, and you do a jump, and you go, okay, bam, you get hit by that. Right when you see this, you have to tell in your head, okay, this guy likes to mash DP when he's under pressure. Right after he blocks a button, there's a good chance he might DP. So next time, you block. Punish. 
this punish will actually uh, um will actually get into in gold but in silver to gold keep it simple you see that boom 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 if you have the meter go ahead and spend it in gold uh well, that, well i'm gonna have a new punish for you guys but keep uh be aware of that be aware of of, of dp measures uh, and if you want a good example, just uh, rewind the video a bit and go back to the match where I play the Akuma player. He did do that quite a bit, if you want an example. Um, and lastly, guys, I, didn't, I haven't mentioned this all like at all throughout the series. I probably should have mentioned this earlier. Is neutral jumping over fireballs. This is really good in the fireball game if you guys are struggling with Sagat or Guile. If they're sitting there and they're throwing fireballs, let's say, let's say max range, right? Let's say this Sagat... Throwing them. Well, let me actually let me redo this. I, I'm, I'm really bad at Sagat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> the reason why I play soccer. All right. So if I do this, what I'm doing here is every time the fireball hits, I'm immediately starting to do my next fireball. There's actually a way to counter this. It might be hard to deal with that, right? So for example, if I set Sagat to do that, if you neutral jump over, now. The, the player cannot throw another fireball until the fireball is off the screen. So sometimes they'll whiff a hard punch trying to get a fireball out. See, like that. And now, and then in between that space, you can walk forward a bit and get closer and closer. Get closer and closer. And then you jump. Right? That's kind of the whole point of countering the fireball game. Right? Is getting in close enough to your opponent... Where if they throw a fireball and you get a read, you get a, a nice jump in. And you get a lot of damage. So I didn't talk about that, but yeah. Um, don't just block them all day. Sometimes neutral jump them. And throw, the, throw them off their feet. Um, but besides that, I think with everything I've mentioned up to this point, you guys have all the tools you need to get to gold rank. Uh, so for the next video, we're going to be mentioning... I I'm going to be introducing a ton of new things. Things like meaties, what are meaties, meaty setups, very basic meaty setups, um, the throw slash meaty game, delay teching, and maybe a bit of whiff punishing. Kind of like what we saw with that, with that, with that, um, what I guys mentioned with whiff punishing Zangief's charge hard punch with hard kick. Although I'm not too sure, I do have to go, go over the footage, but that is a big chunk of what I'm going to cover in part four, gold to plat. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far. I'm going to leave all the appropriate links down in the description below to my Twitter, where I post updates from my YouTube and when I'm going live on Twitch, my, my Twitch stream, where most of my primary content is held on and my collections where I saved all of the source content with the rookie to diamond tutorial I recorded a few months ago. So you want to go, if you want to go to the source content and watch the, the entire footage, I will leave it in the description below. But I hope this tutorial is helping you guys out so far. I hope you guys are in gold by now if you're watching this video. Um, and I hope to, I hope the next video and, and part 5, Plat to Diamond, will continue to help you guys in your rank journey. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.